Hello YouTube, this is Eli, the OBD Tech. I'm here, uh, I'm here working on a 2000 Lexus ES300 with a 3.0 liter engine, V6. This video is going to be based on symptoms of a dirty mass, uh, mass airflow sensor. You know, what to look for on a, on a uh, scan tool. Basically by looking at your short term and long term fuel terms and actually determining that there's something uh, there's actually something wrong with either a, a, a mass airflow sensor going faulty or a dirty mass airflow sensor. You know, uh, this vehicle does have a change engine light. Uh, it's a P0420, you know, which I'm going to show you guys real quick. Bank one catalyst, system efficiency below threshold. So basically, this this means that the computer has detected that the uh, that the bank one catalyst is not being able to perform to its full potential. You know, it's not able to uh, burn the emission gases uh, gases to through the tailpipe uh, to its to its full potential. So this is the reason why the computer has triggered this P0420. So basically, the computer uses the the rear main uh, O2 sensor to determine. The catalyst is working to its uh, to its full system efficiency. All right, guys. So, like I said, this video is going to be based on on a dirty mass airflow sensor. And I'm going to you know show you guys the way you know I was able to determine that this vehicle has a dirty mass airflow sensor by looking at the sh uh, short term and long term fuel trims. You know, so uh, let me set up and then, you know, I'll show you guys. Alright guys, you know, so I already have my scan tool already hooked up. Ready for you guys. I have already uh, the short term and long term fuel trims on bank 1 and bank 2, you know, already set up. And also at the same time, you know, also added the engine speed, which is RPM. Because, uh, because you know, I'm going to perform some, uh, some tests, you know, so I want to, you know, be able to... Uh, you see, uh, see the RPM at the same time. So currently, our short-term fuel trim on bank one is showing negative 0.03. Our long-term fuel trim uh, on bank one is showing positive 6.22. Our short-term, our short-term uh, fuel trim on bank two is showing positive 1.53. And our long, uh, our long-term fuel trim on bank two. It's showing positive 10.12 percent. These numbers at idle are basically uh, within range for this vehicle. Next to me, you know, I have actually the uh, the printout of normal uh, values on a well, you know, for this vehicle. For example, for this vehicle on short-term and long-term futures on bank one and bank two, our norm our normal range should be within zero. Plus or, plus or minus 20%. So, you know, you know, so this is a reason why the computer hasn't triggered a check engine light since our fuel trim numbers are, are within that range. So, in other words, if you add short terms on bank two, uh, short term and long term together, we actually have uh, about 11, or actually about 12 point, I'll say 12 point, uh, 12.4 so which is still within spec and on bank one short term and long term fuel terms if you add them together we have about I'll say maybe within 7.7% 7, 7 uh, percent so which is still within uh, within range but now to actually determine if there's something if there's if, if your master flow sensor is is uh is actually dirty you must perform this test well you know by um uh, by actually uh ta uh, taking your rpms above a thousand rpm so well you know uh so you know i'll perform uh, the test where you know i'll take the rpm to about 1500 then from 1500 to 2000 from 2000 to uh, to 2500 and at the end uh, to 3000 RPM and let's watch our long term and fuel trims numbers both on bank 1 and bank 2 so alright all right, guys you know, so I'm going to uh, first you know go up to 1500 RPM and let's watch our, our fuel trims 
So here we go. So as you can see, our long term on bank one and bank two are actually increasing. It went from 10 now to 13. On bank one, it went from 6 to 10. So at All right, so at 15,000 RPM, we're seeing that our fuel trim numbers are actually going up on long-term fuel trims. So this basically is indicating that there's actually a problem on either a mass airflow sensor problem or, e or either a fuel delivery problem. But in this case, you know, since I already performed pre-diagnosis, I've, I've actually determined that, that that is a dirty mass airflow sensor that's causing this fuel trims to go high at a hard RPM so now from 1500 to 2000 so as we increase the RPM our fuel trims keep going up on bank 1 and bank 2 and now 2500 So this is at 2,500. Our fuel trims on bank one is 20% on long term, and on long term bank two it's about 23. Now let's go to 3,000. So the higher the RPM, our fuel trim, our long term fuel trims on bank one and bank two, just keep just basically keep going up and up. So this is so this is basically telling me. That there is a problem like I said either a mass airflow sensor problem or a fuel delivery problem but in this case like I said this is a mass airflow sensor that is dirty that's causing the symptoms as you increase the RPM our long-term fuel trims keep going up so right now this is at idle at, at you know at 700 RPM which is which they drop back to it to the range you know that we had before Long-term fuel trim bank two is 10%. Long-term fuel trim bank one is 6.22. It's still at idle. Our fuel trims are still within spec. Usually, um, at idle, a mass air uh, a mass airflow sensor basically has normal values. But you know, but as soon as you increase the RPM, if your fuel trim numbers get worse, like if, for example, if they go up instead of going down. That indicates that you know that we have a problem on either a fuel delivery or a, or a master flow sensor. Uh, let's say that if our fuel trims uh, actually went down, th that would indicate that we probably have a vacuum leak somewhere in the system. But in this case, it's the opposite. Our fuel trim numbers are, are going up, especially our, our long term fuel trims on bank one and bank two. So now the next step, you know, I'm going to show you guys. Um, actually the normal rating on a mass airflow sensor at, at idle at idle our range should be between 3.3 4.7 grams per second so you know so I'm going to show you guys on the scan tool the mass airflow sensor which also gives us more evidence that there's a problem with our mass airflow, uh, mass airflow sensor currently our mass airflow sensor is showing, is showing at idle 2.7 eight grams per second like I said this range should be between 3.3 and 4.7 grams per second so this basically is uh, is giving us further evidence that you know that we have a problem on the mass airflow sensor in this case is a dirty mass airflow sensor now you know I'm gonna increase the RPM supposedly at 2500 RPM our range should be between 10.4 15.4 grams per second so I'm going to raise the RPM to 2500. So right now I'm at 1000. 1500. So at, so at 2500 RPM, our mass airflow sensor grams per second is reading 9.61 which is also indicating below spec like I said it should be between 10.4 and 15.4 at 2500 RPM 
So this is basically giving, uh, giving us further evidence that, that, our, that our mass airflow sensor is either dirty or is going out. So I guess the next step is to go to our, you know, to do a visual inspection and then, you know, show you guys that the mass airflow sensor hot wires are basically dirty. All right, guys. So, you know, so that's the next step, you know, show you guys the mass airflow sensor. All right, guys, you know, so I'm here, you know, showing you guys the, uh, the mass airflow sensor, the hot resistors. I'm not sure, you know, if, if my uh, camera is going to pick it up. Uh, wait, uh, let me try to zoom in. So you can see, you know, there's two resistors. It seems that the bottom one is the most dirty one. The top one seems to be dirty, but not as much. But you know, this, you know, this is basically uh, basically showing you that that this uh, master flow sensor is dirty, which is causing this symptom, which are RPM. You know, with the higher RPM, our fuel trims keep going up. So basically, to fix this problem is to basically clean the resistors. Try to clean the resistors first, and then put it back on, and then check your uh, fuel trim numbers. If your fuel trim numbers uh, don't improve, it's basically the, uh, the the next best thing is to just replace the the master flow sensor with a brand new one. Well, you know, I personally I wouldn't uh, buy a a, uh, a uh, what's it called a remanufactured one because sometimes those those when you put them on, you know, your car still runs like crap. So if you replace it, make sure to replace it with the brand new one. So I'll clean this uh, master flow sensor and I'll put it back and, and then you know, we'll check our fuel trim numbers and see if our fuel trim numbers uh, do improve. All right, guys. All right, guys, you know, so I already cleaned the, uh, uh, the master flow sensor. You know, I, I've already installed it. I plugged the connector back, you know, but I, you know, but I also wanted to show you guys, you know, how I go about cleaning a master flow sensor. I, you know, I usually use a uh, the uh, the CRZ mass airflow sensor cleaner, and also use a brush. So you know, so this is how I clean the uh, mass airflow sensor by using the the uh, the CRC mass airflow sensor spray cleaner and the and a typical brush, and just clean it uh, nice and uh, gentle because you don't want to damage those resistors. All right, guys. So the next step, you know, uh, th this is moment of truth. Well, you know, I'm going to show you guys the, the the live data on the fuel trims and determine if by cleaning this master plus, uh, mass airflow sensor actually you know fix the uh, the long term fuel trims uh, numbers. All right, guys. All right, guys. So this is our you know our fuel trim numbers after cleaning the the mass airflow sensor. It seems that our long-term fuel trim numbers went up a, a little bit. Before you know, we we read uh, at idle 6.22 on bank one long-term, and on bank two a long-term was about 10.22 percent. Right now it's showing on bank one it's showing 8.56 on long-term bank two it's showing about 12.46 and it seems that it it went up by two percent. Uh, it seems that this may may have not fixed the problem by you know by actually dropping the, uh, the you know the numbers lower I, I guess the next thing I'll do well well first of all you know I'm gonna raise the rpm and and see what happens as you can see you know our long-term futures are going up just at 1500. So I guess the next thing I'll do is just you know try to reset the uh, the, the computer you know by erasing the codes and let's see if that helps by our by you know by clearing our you know our our uh, fuel trims. So I'll do that. I'm gonna you know turn the engine off and key on again and and clear the codes. I 
focus on one of the bad one. Clearing DTCs. Okay, DTC is cleared. Let's go back to live data. I'll start the engine. It seems that uh, by clearing the the DTCs that our fuel trims are still the same. It did drop a little bit by 1%. Before it was 8%, now they went down to 7%. And long term of bank 2 is about 11.66. Usually after a fix, uh, usually after either replacing the master flow sensor or by cleaning it, the symptoms by, by either uh, replacing it or by cleaning it, our long term fuel trim should come down to approximately close to 0% uh, percent on on either on bank 1 or bank 2 so I, I guess the next thing for me to probably see if we fix the problem is to actually disconnect the the negative uh, um, battery pulse since uh, well you know since clearing the uh, DTCs did not fit, uh, help us at all so I'll do that guys you know I'm gonna uh, disconnect the negative pulse for about two seconds and then put it back and then I'll show you guys the fuel trims again all right guys but before you know I disconnect the you know the negative uh, battery pulse you know I'm gonna show you guys you know the readings on the master flow sensor currently is reading 2.86 2.9 it's basically around the same number that you know that we had before cleaning the master flow sensor before cleaning it we we were at 2.8 grams per second it did improve by a little bit but not much so all right guys you know so i'm going to disconnect the battery pulse and then you know bring you uh back to this uh live data on the fuel trims all right guys all right guys so, you know so this is uh, after disconnecting the uh, negative battery pulse our fuel trim, uh, our short term, long term fuel trims on bank one and bank two are currently showing negative 0 0.03. I guess the vehicle has to go into closed loop first, but I guess that's the way to actually, you know, reset the the fuel trim numbers on, on on the computer is to by disconnecting the uh, either the negative or uh, either the negative or, or positive um, pulse on the battery. All right, so I guess the vehicle has gone into closed loop since our short-term fuel trims are, are fluctuating. Our short-term fuel trims are actually going up. Our long-term fuel trims are still staying at negative 0 0.03. I guess this is uh, what's happening right now is that the computer, it's... Uh, Doing a uh, a relearn process, so I'm pretty sure this is normal. So I'm pretty sure this is a fix, guys. By you know by you know by cleaning the uh, master flow sensor, since our long term fuel trims did come down to basically close to zero percent. Now you know I'm gonna show you uh you know uh take you to the master flow sensor. So at idle it's actually showing us 3.11 grams per second. Spec is between 3.3 .3 and 4.7 grams per second. So I guess even by cleaning it. The master flow sensor seems to be still below spec. Well, I'm going to raise the RPM now to 2500 and see if, if that goes within spec now. Between 10.4 and 15.4. So at um, 
you know, so at 2,500, our grams per second is actually within, within spec, which is good. That's at 11.41. Before, we had a approximately a 9.61 grams per second. That was before cleaning the uh, acid flow sensor, which was below spec. Right now, it's at within spec between 10.4 and 15.4, which is good. So I guess at idle, our master our master flow sensor is not going to be exactly within range but at least at a hard rpm our master flow sensor was reading within spec now let me take you back to the uh, short term field term numbers so as you can see it seems that by cleaning the master flow sensor Actually, our problem did not get fixed. Our long-term, our long-term fuel trends went back to seven and ten point nine, which were around the same as before, six point two two and ten point two two. So, since since we cleaned the master flow sensor and that didn't fix our problem, I guess the next thing for this vehicle is going to be probably. A problem on the fuel delivery maybe restricted injectors or maybe restricted uh, fuel filter which is causing this uh, this future numbers to actually rise as as the RPM goes up so you know so I'm gonna raise the RPM so, so as you can see our future numbers are still going up as I raise the RPM all right, guys. You know, so I did my best. Well, you know, I'm not gonna chase the, you know, a, you know, um, a fuel delivery problem. You know, so, well, you know, since, well, you know, since the customer is not actually paying me for this uh, diagnosis, uh, the reason I filmed it, it was just to a uh, diagnosis for myself because before, you know, I was, I was, you know, doing anything. You know, I actually looked at the uh, uh, at the data. And I was well, I was curious about the fuel trim numbers, you know. So I decided to do this. You know, you know, actually perform this test to see, you know, if the problem was within a mass airflow sensor, a fuel delivery, or a vacuum leak. For for a moment, I thought it was the, the it was a the mass airflow sensor being a fault since since it was dirty, so since the resistors were dirty. It seems that you know it's not the case. So, like I said, the next, the the next thing was to actually chase a fuel delivery. Probably, probably down the road, you know, I, I may come back to this. You know, since the customer is not paying me for this, I might tell them about this problem that you know that I'm seeing with the fuel trim numbers. That I think the next step to this it, uh, is to go and chase the uh, for restricted fuel injectors by doing an injector balance test. And also by checking the uh, fuel pressure to see if, if it's within spec and maybe maybe even replacing the fuel filter all right guys you know so hopefully this uh, this little pre-diagnosis that I did you know helped you guys uh, to determine if your master flow sensor is at fault by you know by either being faulty or being uh, or by having a dirty resistors all right guys so this is Eli the OBD tech thanks for watching all right guys you know so this is the fuel trim numbers after taking the vehicle for a spin actually our long-term fuel trims on bank one and bank two actually did improve on bank one our fuel trim dropped to approximately negative 0.081 which is still within zero percent our bank two it dropped to 7.78 it's still not it's still it's still within spec no matter what it dropped uh, about three percent, which is still good. And, and like I said, you know, this is after driving the the car for for about five minutes. I guess you know the vehicle had to, uh, well, you know, has to get relearned. You know, as you drive the vehicle. But I actually found and uh, actually, well, well, you know, since I drove the vehicle. 
I actually found more evidence to this field trims as you can see well, uh, you know as I um, increase the RPM our fuel trims will rise but then it will drop to it will rise and then drop so it's telling me that this vehicle has multiple prompts maybe a, a fuel delivery prompt and a vacuum leak so here we go guys as I increase the RPM our long trip fuel trims are going up but as I go close to 3000 RPM our fuel trims will drop especially on bank one on bank two it doesn't leave it doesn't really drop as you can see right there drop back to 7.8 so this is telling me that we may have a vacuum leak somewhere in the system which is affecting especially on bank one not really on bank two so like I said I think this is a uh, probably a fuel a fuel re, you know delivery problem combined with the vacuum leak you know somewhere in the system which is affecting both banks one is actually making the fuel trim go uh, go high on bank one and then drop back down on bank two the fuel trim goes goes high and then drops back to seven point something which I you know I'll do one more time you know so pay, you know so you know so pay attention to the long term fuel trims on bank one and bank two as I increase the RPM the our percentage increases both at our nine percent right now now bank one is dropping so you know so you know so I'm suspecting a vacuum leak somewhere in, uh, in bank one maybe an intake manifold gasket leak our bank two long term it dropped back to 7.78 so which tells me there's possibility also that there's a vacuum leak somewhere that's affecting especially more on bank one than bank two but I'm still th thinking that on bank two there's probably a maybe injector restriction somewhere on that bank all right guys so it seems that by cleaning the mass airflow sensor it did help somewhat so like I said you know if the customer decides uh, to do uh, further diagnosis on this vehicle I will probably do a part two but for now you know I, this video was just to you know show you guys a potential problem and a potential fix so hopefully you like this video this is Eli the OBD Tech uh, thanks for watching